Okay, just a quick video today. I'm sitting on my couch. Behind you is my main television. And I came up with a situation recently where I needed to get an HDMI signal to this TV from a different part of the house. Now, over 12 years ago, I made a video about a wireless HDMI transmitter and it worked okay, but there's always that issue with wireless signals that they can cut out or get interference. They've come on in leaps and bounds since then. So I was looking at that as a possible solution, but while I was looking for that, I came across this. This is just one example of sending HDMI over a network cable. It's an EX165C Plus from a company called Ori. They've got a website with a load of different AV solution type devices. This, I think, is the cheapest HDMI over CAT6 cable option, and it's done the job that I needed. I can now watch the video on this TV from a source elsewhere, and with the remote, I can control it all down here as well. There's no difference whatsoever with regard to the video quality, the audio quality, or the functionality. So that's why I wanted to share it with you, because I've got a broadband connection which goes into a back bedroom, which is like the office. And then I've got a satellite TV system in the lounge. The broadband people said, we can throw in television with that and we can reduce your price down and increase your broadband speed. So I went, yeah, all right then. And I got this box through for TV over cable. It's a Virgin TV 360 box. If I could get the video from this cable box to the television, I could get rid of my Skybox, the satellite TV system. And that is why I went and got this. Now I'm gonna show you how I set it all up. And I did make a bit of a cock up at one point in there, but it all came right in the end. So let's just have a look at what's in the box and what you have to do to set this one up. Now, one vital piece of information I didn't include there is that there is a Cat6 cable connection that runs between the office room and the lounge, and that's what makes this whole thing possible. That wire fell out of use a number of years ago when I upgraded to a faster Wi-Fi system. OK, so here's what we've got inside the box. There's a transmitter and a receiver. There's an IR blaster and receiver cable. And that enables you to send your infrared remote signals back to the transmitter to control the box that's sat next to it. There's a 12 volt power supply. There's only one. It has to be plugged into the transmitter. The receiver gets its power from the transmitter's end. Now, the transmitter has a connector for the infrared blaster, the Cat6 cable, the power in, as well as an HDMI pass-through, enabling you to carry on watching your video device at the source as well as at the remote end. Other than that, there's a switch for the EDID. This lets you choose which end communicates the display identification capabilities, but most people don't need to worry about this. I bought myself a couple of new short Cat6 cables to attach either device up to my RJ45 junction boxes, and I was happy to see the power supply is secured to the transmitter with a screw connector. Now, the only slight confusion was trying to figure out which was the IR blaster cable and which was the receiver, because both looked slightly different to the pictures in the manual. However, I later realised that my cable box remote used Bluetooth anyway, so I don't need to use this IR capability. Now, as for the receiver end, it's a simpler affair. It's just got sockets for the Cat6 cable, the IR receiver, and the HDMI output. Oh, and both of these boxes are metal and can be mounted to a surface with screws. So with everything plugged in at the transmitter end, I went off to the TV room and I plugged the cable between the junction box and the receiver. And not a lot happened, which was weird because when this cable was last plugged into a computer, it worked just fine, but now it seems to be totally dead. The receiver has a power and a link light that are either side of the network socket, and neither of these were lit. So it seems like there's some kind of connection problem. Now, I thought there must be a break somewhere in the cable. So in order to determine which of those eight internal wires wasn't connected, I bought this cheap tester. So if you're unfamiliar with these, there's a master unit which takes a battery and then that illuminates a series of lights on both itself and on the remote device to show which of the connections between the two are good. With a working cable, all the lights illuminate in sequence. So now it's the turn of my wires. How many of these aren't connected? Well, after I put the transmitter at the TV end, this is the result I get. Yeah, what idiot did this wiring? 
I suppose the positive, though, is that every wire is connected, just not necessarily in the right order. So the wire isn't broken anywhere, it's just messed up. I think what happened is that I connected these two boxes based upon the colour-coded key that was printed inside each one. But on one, I'd use the A standard layout, and on the other one, I'd use the B. So it's just a matter of unpicking the wires and starting again. But this time, I'm going to move the box to the opposite layout to the one that it's currently using. So in this case, I'm moving from A to B. And I can see as I'm connecting the wires back up again, the lights are now starting to flash sequentially. And by the time I'd finished, all the lights were indicating, showing that everything was connected up. So it was time to put the boxes back together. And this time, both the lights on the receiver were illuminated, which shows that it was communicating properly with the transmitter and the TV signal was being received. And as you can see, it's working just fine can go to the menus here, we can get the TV guide on. I don't know why I keep pointing it over here, I don't need to do that. In fact, I'll do it this way now, I'll cover it up because I'm scrolling through the menus on the screen here with the Bluetooth remote. And as you can see, it's doing it exactly as you'd expect if the box were just sat here under the TV. So again, keep pointing at the TV. I don't know if I'll ever get out of that habit, but yeah, it's working perfectly. I might as well just have the box sat down here, but without all the wiring. That is one of the issues with the Virgin 360 system. Every room that you have a box in has to be connected up to the proper cable input. Now, with the Sky system, they do these little Sky mini boxes. So you have your main one connected up to the satellite, but then the other ones are connected to that via Wi-Fi. I thought the Virgin would have done something like that, but as they didn't, I had to come up with this solution instead. Now, when I bought this, I thought it was only a 1080p capable device, but it says here on the specs on the back, it'll do 4K 30 because it's got HDMI 1.4 and it's HDCP 1.4 as well. But I'm not using 4K 30. The Virgin 360 box has one UHD channel and you can watch it in 1080p. And this TV does a good scaling job anyway. If I want to watch stuff in 4K, I want to watch it with HDR, Dolby Atmos, and all the rest of it, and I'll be watching that through streaming boxes. So this is really just for 1080p content for me, and that's what I've judged it on, and it's working just fine with that. I've had no breakups, no issues at all. Uh, the video is pin sharp. In fact, I think it's even better quality than it was coming out of my satellite box previously. That seemed quite soft, whereas the Virgin one seems to be a clearer image. Sound quality is coming through just fine. The remote is working perfectly because it's a Bluetooth remote. The device is only at the back of the house up there. It's controlling it just fine. There's no delay, there's no interruption, there's no problem with it whatsoever. And also it's working through all the EARC stuff. So it will go through and adjust the sound bar and all the rest of it. It's as though I've got the box underneath the television. I cannot recommend this device highly enough for someone who has this particular situation, which is probably next to no one. But you might be a person who's got a Xbox or whatever set up on one particular TV, but then sometimes you might want to watch it on the TV in the other part of the house. Yeah, if you do have the option to route cables through your house, it's much better than, say, trying to get HDMI cables going through your house with the big plugs on the end. You could get a little Cat 6 cable through a very small drilled hole and then just attach a box to either end like I have, although make sure you wire them up correctly. That's all I wanted to say. It's gone on longer than I thought it would, but that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.